a visitor for the very first time to this historic movement. If there is anyone who is present here for the very first time, we would like for you to please stand so that we might acknowledge your presence, present you with a token of our appreciation as well as a souvenir marking your visit to this uh, historic church. Imani Faith. Imani Faith. Imani Faith. But well, we want to invite you to become a part of the Imani Nation. Not a church, not just simply a building, but a move of God. A nation built upon faith. And at the conclusion of this service, when we sing the anthem, the Imani anthem, we are a part of Imani Nation. You will understand why it's important for us to raise up a new standard so that we might speak truth to power and truly spread the word of God to the ends of the earth. We ask you to remember that our motto, our church motto is each one bring one, each one teach one, each one reach one. We have such a beautiful facility here. This is not only a worship and praise center, but as we go to a dinner, uh, immediately following this liturgy, we have a special menu uh, in our fellowship hall, in the, uh, the basement, uh, in the undercroft. Uh, we have uh, professional chefs who are part of our staff who prepare these gorgeous, delicious, succulent, voracious, ravenous meals. So we want you to come and be a part of a great culinary experience. This is a community center as well as a cultural arts center. that you won't even want to think about going home. That you'll just simply sign your checks with just your signature and let us fill in the blanks, as well as just turn everything over to us because you won't be going back to your own house anyhow. It's that comfortable. When you go downstairs, you're gonna see, our, you're gonna see changes. We make changes here every week. You see the women who have gone to the, to the labora, to, to the lavatory, have, to, to the lavatory, have noticed that we have taking it to another notch. As you go out the door, look to the right. We just have a few more things to do. And now by next week, it will be completely finished. Everything will be done in that restroom. It's beautiful, ladies. Of course, we painted it pink last week. You noticed that if you went in there on last week, it was a bright pink, a Pepto-Bismol pink. <laughs> Pepto-Bismol pink. We wanted to celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Week. So we decided to paint the women's bathroom pink to see if any of the women noticed that it was so bright pink that men wouldn't even go anywhere near it because it just it just had a, an aura about it that said men be gone. But uh, but now we've changed the color and we're we're making it very nice, very soothing, very comfortable. Uh, you're going to see downstairs we have a beautiful, beautiful setting, a, a living room type setting with these beautiful movie theater chairs and couches and a flat screen TV in that corner. You won't want to leave that corner today. You'll be fighting over one of those chairs. Amen. In fact, I know that you're going to fight over them so much so that I'm even thinking about charging admission to get on one of those chairs. Amen. Now. But you're going to really enjoy it. And um, uh, we're going to be closing in all the ceilings in the next week or two. Everything will be done. We'll have the entire building finished and we'll have a complete tour of all four floors of this beautiful edifice. 37,255 square feet. And it's been a, a work of art. It's been, we've had a dedicated, committed staff. I cannot begin to thank all of those who have played such a significant role. We were told that when we purchased this building, we were told by architects, uh, engineers, um, real estate agents that there was no way that we could be able to reno renovate this facility for less than $3.5 million. But God is greater than any architect. God has a plan. If God said, if you are in one accord, I'm going to show you how to reduce that significantly. So God said, find members in your church who have experience, who have the know-how, who have the expertise. And God led me to a brother by the name of Michael Alexander. Yeah. 
who has an experience and a back. Come on up, Brother Michael Alexander. We're not even through yet, but I want you to see this man of God. He lives and breathes in my name. He's here morning, noon, and night. He's the first one who enters this building. He's an awesome brother. He has an awesome brother. His whole experience, turn around so they can see you, but just stay right there. He has an experience. This man of God, is he is Imani in so many ways. And I'm telling you, he has used his expertise, his engineering skills, his HVAC of heating and air conditioning systems. Brother Michael Alexander is a man for all seasons. He really knows how to conduct a renovation project. Another, another brother, friend of mine, who also assists him, Reverend Greg Carter, is not here right now. But both Brother Michael Alexander and uh, Reverend Greg Carter served as the general contractors, the, the uh, general contractors and the engineers for this project. So we would not have to go out and hire some professional company to do that and cost us millions of dollars. And we... And, and Brother Alexander has been assisted throughout this entire renovation project with two special people. I really call them the first couple of Imani Temple Capital Region because they are here day and night, every day of the week. This man uh, comes, he, he drives a school bus for PG uh, County, and yet when he when he parks the bus, he comes in here and he works until it's time to go back to the bus, and then he goes back to the bus takes up, picks up uh, uh, handicapped children, and then comes back to Imani. And then he brings his wife with him too. And she's in charge of our household. She's in charge of our country. None other than brother Glenn and sister Regina Turner. I want them to come down too. I want you to see these great, come on down. Come on down, I want you to see them. This altar, this altar that you see in front of us was designed and built by Brother Glenn Turner Carpenter. The pulpit built and designed by Brother Glenn Carpenter. This beautiful place, this beautiful place that you see and, and so many things that, so many of the appointed things, Sister Regina Turner did them. I tell you, they, are, they, 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 they have made this project. And then we have the one who is over, who oversees uh, the crew here at Imani, the beautiful grounds that you see, the manicured lawns, everything meticulously done. The, the outside and the inside, Brother Rodney Freeman Hawkins. Come on, Hawk. Where is he? Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on down. We're also very pleased. We have we have a man. We have a man who you know who has supervised the supervisors and keeps the bishop in check. We couldn't live without him. Doris Mitchell couldn't live without him. But Charles Smitty Smith, where's where's Smitty? Come on, Smitty. Come on, Smitty. Where's Smitty? And we have. We have some of our our, our, our our building crew and ground crew. We see Brother Sylvester Ivory Williams, known as Rudy. Come on up, Rudy. You need, and come up with your fiance, Tracy Johnson. Come on up. Tracy has been helping with keeping the house cleaning too. These are some great people here. I want you to see these. These are the backbones. These are this the muscle that has helped to keep this place that would bring us to this point. We were told that we could not renovate this place in less than a year. It'll be five months, This the end of this month, five months, and we've got it done. We've got it done. And what they said would take $3.5 million. We did it in $1 million. $1 million. Three times, more than three times less than what they say we could renovate. It. This building has all new heating and air conditioning, wiring, plumbing. It has a spectacular, you know, we've, we had to restore this place from the ground up. It's unreal. It's God. It's God's mercy. God did this, but God did it through them. God in them. This is my backbone. These, these are my, and Sister Rose Butler, I don't know where she's going to have to come out of. I didn't want to disturb her, but Sister Rose Butler, our chief financial officer who has managed, yes, who has managed, managed every dollar, every cent here, who has watched it like an eagle watching her nest watching her new uh, sister rose butler our chief financial officer day and night night and day working here to make sure that this could happen 
I tell you, what a great crew. This is a great crew. And you know, we have, you know, this, 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 this team, this is a great team. And we have another person on the team too. My son, Antonio Gray. Tony comes on down. I don't know where JR is. Charlie Walker the third. These young men, these young men have been driving our U-Haul truck. They make deliveries. They, they pick up things. They bring things. They work for Sister Rose Butler, really. Sister Rose Butler loves them to death. And they and and and, and, and my son Tony says he loves them more. You know, where there's Smitty. There's Miss Smitty. We want to make sure Smitty. And you know something? Come on up, JR. And I want, you know, this new, this beautiful sound system that we have, the audio visual system. Uh, you know, I won't even tell you how much they told us that would cost because then Larry may try to get more money out of me. But anyhow, Brother Larry Pinkney is, the, is our AV technician. Come on, Brother Larry Pinkney. Brother Larry Pinkney has wired all the TVs that you will see throughout the building. Larry Pinkney has wired them up. Larry Pinkney has, has made them work. He's an awesome young man. A gifted young man and brother Larry Pinkney was was here with the former ministry and he's been on with us and he can't believe what he has seen he cannot believe how this bill is transferred now hold team we got Gloria Madden a part of the team Imania Powers is a part of our AV team you come on out they need to see who are the who are the persons behind the curtains the person behind the seat Imania Powers the daughter here of there she goes a Valerie Green Power, Gloria Jean Madden. Oh, these are. I, did I forget? I want to make sure I didn't forget anyone because I, you know, these are this. This is the the. These are the nuts nuts and bolts of this operation who have just worked tirelessly and endlessly. We cannot even begin to compensate them for what they've done. Some of them are volunteers. I mean, I mean, Sister Rose Butler doesn't get a dime. She won't let me hire her. Because she doesn't want to have to take any orders from me. You see that? I don't blame her either. So she said, I'm my own woman. You ain't going to, I love you, Archbishop, but I can't, nah, 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 nah. So these are the ones, this is a great Imani Temple team. And not everyone is here that we want to bring up, but I just want you to see the faces, the names and the faces of the persons who have saved us millions of dollars. Millions, literally, they saved us three to four million dollars because the three, the three million did not include the three point five million didn't include all the equipment that we put in. It didn't include the AV system. It includes all. It didn't include the TVs. It didn't include the furniture. It didn't include, include these shares. So this, these are the ones who have who have sacrificed, who have worked tireless day and night, who are committed to this vision of seeing Imani Temple be a church to serve the community. And there's other one other person that I want to really point out to you. I hope she's still here. I hope she did not leave yet. Uh, because she is the community leader here in Suitland, who has really been the chief enforcer. She's really made Prince George's County jump to our assistance in getting this building completed and getting uh, permits and moving through the through the labyrinth, through the bureaucratic labyrinth of permits, inspections, and enforcement. Miss Elsie Jacobs. Is Miss Elsie Jacobs still here? She was here for the eight o'clock service and now she probably had to go, but she's she's dedicated. We'll, we'll have a special tribute. So I just want you to see these, uh, our brothers and sisters, to show this love that they have for this church and the best is still yet to come. Thank you very much. Talking about, talking about services, talking about liturgies, our masses, we now, beginning next month, Beginning the first of next month, we have an eight o'clock liturgy. And this liturgy that was at 10 is now 1030. And I have been told that Archbishop, when 1030 comes, you better walk down that aisle. And you know something? I'm going to follow that. At 1030, eight o'clock means eight o'clock. 1030 means 1030. You can come whatever time you want. But I'm going to try to get through it so fast that by the time you, if you're late, you're going to miss the sermon too. And that'll really hurt you. But no. Uh, we, we, so starting on next starting on next Sunday, November the fifth, sixth, is it? Third, first, oh, first it is the November the first. 
it is November, it is November the 1st, is that on November the 1st, our liturgies will be 8 o'clock and 10.30 a.m. And I know there are plans, Father Washington, our senior pastor, has plans to initiate a hip hop service uh, at one o'clock. I think, I don't know exactly when the date that is. Do you know, Sister Valerie Green Powers, when that is? But it's, it's forthcoming and it'll be every Sunday at one o'clock p.m., especially for our sisters. Uh, I mean, for our uh, young people, our sisters and brothers. Uh, this is a, a good day today because uh, we have a, a very special birthday today. I, I know of one person whose birthday uh, is today. There may be some other people in here whose birthday is today. If you do, uh, I will acknowledge that too. But there's a birthday. She's a, she's a former Jenkins sister. You know, we're blessed here at Imani Temple on Capitol Hill. Jenkins, this is Marion Jenkins King, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday to Sister Marion Jenkins King. Who else's birthday today? Your grandson's birthday. Stand up, grandson. Your birthday is tomorrow to my Lord and Lord. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy Happy birthday, yeah. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Uh, we uh, ask for a donation for the meals. It's a great meal. It includes all the entree, uh, dessert, and beverage, uh, $10. And we're using this. We're raising funds to uh, develop our feeding program to the hungry in the community. So what? you give as a donation is not just for the food, but it's also to assist us in developing that ministry to feed the hungry. Amen. Also, we have the food pantry every month. If you wish to partake in that share program, please see Sister Valerie Green Powers. Please stand up, Sister Green Powers. You know who she is. So if you would like to participate uh, in that share program, it's, it's very reasonable. What is it, 20 or 25 now? Mm. All for twenty one dollars. My gosh, you can't feed the menu each month is in the bulletin. Amen. Also, you know, we are live. We are live streaming now. You can actually watch this liturgy online right now. There are people all over the country right now who are participating in this worship by way of Internet. And I hope the information is in the bulletin where you can actually access uh, access the uh, channel in case you are not here on Sunday. We don't want that to be a substitute, but in case you you, you are afflicted, you can't, you know, you, you had too many last night or you just, you know, you're still drowning in your sorrow because you went to Maryland Live last night and lost your money, then you, you need to, uh, anyhow. Well, I hope you didn't lose your tithes and offerings last night. I hope you didn't drink that up or part of that away because it's critically important that we sow a seed in this ministry so that we can really serve the community here in the Suitland area in a way that no other church is doing it. We have already been told by the leadership that we are the ones who have 
come into this community and say, we want to be of service to you. We want to be, uh, we want to help meet the needs of this community. So we're, we're doing that. And that's why we have the support of the uh, Prince George Police Department, the community leaders, the city council, as well as government officials in Prince George's County because they know that we are real and we're about serving the needs of the community. So by, our, by sowing a seed, by our tithes, by our offering, then we can truly continue this great work that God has begun in us. So let us get ready, get ready for the cheerful givers, cheerleading squad, one, two, three. This is giving time. The cheerful givers. It's better to give than to receive. I dare, double dare you, triple dare you to try God. God says, it, try me. Try me and see if I will not bring forth the tithe and, and try me in this and see if I will not open up the windows of my storehouse and, and bless you beyond all measure. God is not a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is telling you to hold, telling us to hold on to that dollar. Do you know that George Washington is the most religious president in America? Because he comes to church every Sunday in the collection basket. <laughs> Poor Benjamin. Benjamin Franklin doesn't stand a chance hardly in the church today. He never goes to church. Never, never is brought to the basket. We need to make Benjamin our hero. Benjamin, bring the Benjamins, the Benjamin Franklins. Or write the check for $100. You know, some people, some people say, you know, if, you know, some people say, you want me to give $100 on Sunday? Yeah, because, you know, you're supposed to give the tithe, the 10%. You know, some people really have difficulty giving $100 or $200. You know, they make $3,000 a week. And they don't want to give God, th if, if you make $3,000 a week, that's gross. Not, not after they take out the house note, the car note, the chick on the side. I mean, uh, uh, all that other stuff. <laughs> See, <laughs> Somebody's, the boyfriend down the street. No, no, no. Now listen. You know, people, people say, I make, you know, so if, it's just before all those deductions. If you make three, if you gross $3,000, the word of God says that you're to give 300. And somebody said, I can't give 300 to the church. You know what I said? They said, that's too much. I said, no problem. Okay, let's touch and agree. And I'll pray that God gives you $10 a week in salary so you can only give a dollar. Now, what do you want? Do you want the 3,000 to give the 300? You want God to give you $10, $100 so you give $10. Or a thousand dollars, and you give a hundred. See, the, the more we give, the more God will give back to us. It's true. It really is true. It's no, no. We just don't say that as preachers to try to get more money out of it. We believe that God is true to God's word, and we do what God says to do. God will. He. I got testifiers in here. I've got some witnesses in here who have who can tell you what tithing has done to their finances and beyond their finances, health and strength and peace of mind. So many people got. There's a whole lot of wealthy people out here who, who have who are messed up from the flow up they, their minds are messed up they got all the money in the world but don't know what to do with it but anyhow i don't need to preach to the choir so we're going to lift up let us lift up the tithes and offerings and pray god's blessing upon it that god will multiply a hundredfold what you and i give today eternal god giver of the gifts we bring we ask you now to bless the tithe and the tither the gift and the giver may this seed be sown to serve this community to serve the needs of this congregation and to be a light to be a witness to how great thou art. In Jesus' name we pray, let the church say amen. amen. Please follow the instructions of the most beautiful, the most handsome, the fabulous, gifted, blessed ministers of hospitality, headed by Sister Phyllis Dorsey, not only the president of our local chapter, but the international president of the ministers of hospitality of the African-American Catholic congregation. Uh, and then after the preach word, we're gonna have a selection. And I mean, after the collection, we have the preach word, and then we have the dismissal to go and enjoy a great meal. Amen. Let us proceed in that order. Let's have some marching music. Thank you. 
Let the church say amen. amen. Now that's a first time visitor to Imani Temple. Can you believe that? Oh my Lord, the first time visitor. She's at home now, I think she found the church home. I, I have one more request before our, our choir sings. I know that there's some of you who sing. We're trying to build this choir, expand the choir, because sometimes things come up and half the choir is not here today. We need to grow this choir. We should have at least this whole sanctuary so you move, move us down, move us out. You, you need to take over this whole section here. We gotta push the altar out beyond this level. Now I know that God has gifted you. We're gonna be talking about that a little bit in the sermon today. How do we fulfill our God-given purpose? And God gives us gifts not for our own use. It's, we call it, you know what a, what a God-given gift is called? It's called charism. C-H-A-R-I-S-M. Again, C-H-A-R-I-S-M. C-H-A-R-I-S-M. Charism. A charism is a gift that is given by God, not for one's own personal benefit, but for the edification or the building up of God's church. And if you really want to see your gifts, your gift really magnify God and, and manifest itself, use it in the service of others, not just for yourself. And so I know that God has given some of you a voice. It's only one practice a week, 
on Thursdays and they give you a tape a recorded uh, the recorded songs from YouTube to to learn them on your own as well. I know that there are at least six people here right now. I know that. I don't even have to ask, especially sopranos. Yes. Sopranos. We need some sopranos in this choir. And, I, and I'm telling you, the, the, the black saint of Africa, the black saint of Hippo by the name of Saint Augustine said this, the one who sings prays twice. And some of us, we all need prayer, but some of us need some strong prayer in our lives. And just imagine if you can sing in this choir, you're praying twice and God will get you your answer. You'll get your answer twice as fast by being in this choir, by making a sacrifice. So I want to see who is willing to make a commitment, at least on a trial basis. Give it three months and see how it goes. Who in here is willing to commit himself or herself for the next three months to sing, please stand, to sing, to be a part of this choir. Just stand wherever you are. Just stand wherever you are. To be a part of this great choir. Because very soon, see, we, we have yet to announce, we have yet to publicly announce to the community that we're here because we're waiting for the building to be completed because we know that when the, when the media get a hold of us and our new location, you won't be able to get up in here. I know, we just haven't told them yet. They don't know where we are. We're all under the radar right now. We have reasons for being under the radar. But once we once we pull the, you know, the blinders and move the blinds and take the, the cloak off of, of us, you wait and see what's going to happen when it's plastered all over the news, where we're located and our new home in Suitland. And you won't be able to get a seat in here or in that overflow room. But if you're in that choir, you have a seat right up here every Sunday. So did I only see one person stand? Did I see? Did I don't see? I didn't see anyone else stand. It's Beverly, I see Beverly, Beverly, you can sing. Who else? Only two, only two, only two. So think about it. I'm not going to take up your time right now because we have to move on. But think about it, and I'll be talking to you individually uh, after the service. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> to me 
I need you. Listen to this. Listen to this. for the preach word today as we pray these words together your word oh god is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path i will read and study your word to show myself approved so that i may see thee more clearly love thee more dearly and follow thee more nearly Day by day, this I pray. Let the church say amen. Let us direct our attention today to the word of God as found in the New Testament. In the New Testament, in the gospel according to the beloved apostle, evangelist, and preacher John John chapter 8 verses 55 through 58 the gospel of John chapter 8 verses 55 through 58 and let us hear what thus saith the Lord Jesus said 
you do not know the Father, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. Before Abraham came to be, I am. Through the reading of God's word, may God be glorified, may the church be edified, and as always, may the devil be horrified. The title of the sermon today is, What's in your name? What's in your name? Not what's in your wallet, but what's in your name? Naming ceremonies. A thing of the past. In African culture, African civilization, the naming of an infant child was a cause for celebration. No child was given a name without first having those parents enter into a deep period of introspection prayer and meditation searching down the corridors of that family's history and understanding what was god's plan or god's purpose for that family back three and four generations and what the birth of that child meant not something that was accidental or by chance but providentially appointed for that child to come in onto the earth before the name was even given to that child those parents had to look within their own family circle and to see what was lacking that God was now going to fulfill in the birth of that child. That what God had promised to that family that had yet to be fulfilled, that that child could bear the anointing that could allow that family to experience wholeness and completeness that it just was not simply a child being born a child that had not yet even begun to see or to 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 realize who was in its environment but a child who was destined for greatness i wonder if any of us ever began to contemplate that the reason why we were born was for greatness. That God had a design, God had a purpose in our being birthed at the time that it occurred, no matter how it happened, that God planned it that way. Because if God did not plan it, if God did not plan it that way and in that manner and in that fashion, God would not have breathed life into mortal flesh. God had to conscientiously decide that that which was, would, was formed in the embryonic stage would one day come forth for its divine purpose or assignment. That your purpose, my purpose, God's plan for our lives were predetermined before the foundations of the earth were even laid. God knew what would be 
your assignment and my assignment. And what our lives, what would give our lives meaning, purpose, and value. There are so many people living today in this community, in this city, in this county, in this nation, in this world, who have yet to come to appreciate who they are or the value that they possess. To appreciate means to grow in value each and every day. To appreciate means to go forward, to move higher, to go beyond our own limited, finite, corporeal, fleshly, mortal understanding of who we are. 